Hey, this is Russ. And yeah, I'm back out on the road again. So I am riding the new Magicycle commuter bike. You know, I think it's gonna rain. <laughs> I was planning to do uh, the range test today. Just to see how far this battery can take me. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Because I think it's going to end up raining on me. So I think what we'll do instead... Let me adjust my uh, mirror here a little bit. <laughs> um, let's just take it for a ride. Uh, this is my third ride out on this, uh, this bike. The first ride was just bringing it over to do the first look. If you haven't seen the first look yet, put a link to that video for you so you can see it just talks a little bit about what the, the features are on the bike I'm not gonna reiterate that here because that would just be a repeat of course so I'll let you take a look at that and then come on back and uh, look at the rest of this video now the key thing with this bike is it's only got one gear there's no derailleur, there's no throttle. <laughs> it does have five levels of pedal assist. It's got a 27 inch by one and a quarter inch tire. I have it pumped up to about 50 pounds of pressure per square inch. And I actually took the bike out a second time went out uh, to a new area, on a new path, and uh, rode about 12 miles on it. I am surprised at how well the bike rode, considering the fact that I am a heavy rider at 255 pounds. This thing has a recommended maximum weight of 265. <laughs> so I'm right up there on the top of the scale. And yet, I was able to ride this bike. Now the interesting thing is that since it kind of looks like a normal non-electric bike, I don't think anybody thought much about it. If anything, they probably wondered what's this heavy guy doing on this regular bike. <laughs> but considering the fact that it does not really look like an e-bike, I don't think anybody has anything to say. about the e-bike being on a trail or a path. Now, the only couple things that I added to this bike, and I'll show you a little bit later on all of it. I added a, a mirror right here on the left-hand side. I think all bikes really should have some type of side mirror so you can see what's coming up behind you. I added a cell phone holder right here. <laughs> I don't think it's the ideal holder for me. I, I think I better, I'm better off putting some type of accessory uh, extension bar across the handlebar and then putting it on there. But this is the only one I had available, so I stuck it there. I changed out the bell, okay? They do give you a bell, but uh, I mentioned to you guys that I had ordered 10 bells from AliExpress. This comes from China. And these bells are my preferred bell at this point because they're slim, they're low profiled, and they cost very little. <laughs> yeah, I got 10 of those things for like $18, a little over $18, including the shipping. So <laughs> it's like $1.80 something per bell. That's not too bad. Now the bell that they, they include isn't too bad, but this one's better. <laughs> I figure for under two dollars, I could I could make that change, <laughs> so I, I changed it out. I'll show it to you a little later. It's kind of hidden underneath the, uh, the cell phone holder, unless you see it. I don't know if you can actually see it or not. It's a little, I don't know, half inch, three quarter of an inch wide circular bar. And then as far as uh. 
bottle holder. I haven't figured that out. So what I did, I, I took a couple of rubber bands, <laughs> attached it to the rear rack, and took a bungee cord and attached it to the rear rack. I just needed something to hold it. So that seems to work at this point, so I'm using that to hold my water bottle because I'm, I'm going to need water. <laughs> the last ride I did, I so dried out from talking and riding. Cause, and you have to pedal. You don't have an option, all right? You don't have a throttle on this type of class one bike. Class one, for those who don't know, is a pedal assisted bike to 20 miles per hour. Class two is a 20 mile per hour assisted bike pedaling and also throttling. Class three is a 28 mile per hour uh, assisted pedaling bike, all right? So this being class one means there's no throttle you get up to 20 miles per hour of assist and uh, you're all on your own to pedal to get moving. <laughs> if you don't pedal, you don't move, okay? So uh, that's what this bike is all about. All right, this bus is going to turn in here. So we're going to wait a little bit here. I'm gonna go up on the sidewalk here because it's just a little bit easier at this point because I'm just gonna go over to the uh, the trail through here and you're talking what a half a block <laughs> on the sidewalk so it's not so bad and anyway it, I am allowed on the sidewalks in my neighborhood I always thought I wasn't but apparently sidewalk riding on a bike is legal in the state of Illinois unless prohibited by law and apparently we're not prohibited. Somebody told me we were, but apparently not. So I'm riding with my ex needle helmet on. As you know, the ex needle helmet has protection up to 28 miles per hour. So it's a little bit more protected than your typical 15 mile per hour bike helmet. And it's got uh, front and red, front and rear headlights. All right, so the rear headlight is, uh, well, I guess you can't call it a headlight unless you say it's on your head. <laughs> um, it's a blinking red light in the back, solid white light in the front. Another key factor of this bike is the, uh, the belt drive. It is so quiet. I, I watched the videos of me riding on the last ride that I did. You could barely hear the bike riding at all. I mean, you don't, you don't hear, even I'm, I'm backpedaling right now. You should be hearing those chains cl uh, clicking, right? Well, we have no chain and we have no derailleur, so there's no clicking. So if you don't use the bell, nobody knows you're coming. Well, unless they hear me talking. Now, to do the range test on this one, it's going to be tough. <laughs> if, if, this, if this thing gives me, let's say, 30 miles of range, I have to pedal for 30 miles. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> as you know, I kind of pedal and throttle, a lot, of, a lot of throttling as I'm talking on these videos, but with this bike, no way. I have to pedal and talk. So uh, that, yeah, that water bottle is going to come in handy a little bit later. I was so dried out on the last uh, on the last ride. I was talking so much, and then I had nothing to drink. By the way, I mentioned that there was three little screw things on the bottom of the down tube. I thought they were for the water bottle, and then I found out that it's not for the water bottle. No, those are the screws that hold in the battery. <laughs> All right, do not mess with those screws. <laughs> Don't turn them, don't do anything. That's what's holding your battery in place. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's not for you to mount anything. Found that out from Magicycle. I asked them, I said, hey, what are those three screws for? And he said, that's what's holding your battery. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna mess with those. <laughs> Leave those alone. But that also means that there's nothing to, uh, to attach your, your water bottle. Now, I, I was looking online, to see what kind of bags I might be able to put, maybe like in a triangle of the bike triangle bag or something. Yeah, they're all kind of small. 
I don't really need to carry that much stuff. What I really need to carry is uh, like a multi-tool. So, so what I did is I, um, Magicycle gave us like a, a cell phone holder bag when I, when I got the uh, Magicycle Cruiser. I never really used that after I put it on for the first time. I, I still prefer these standard uh, cell phone mounts. So, uh, so it just kind of sat around. I said, maybe I can use that as a bag. So I have that attached to the seat post just to hold a multi-tool. <laughs> it would be better if I had uh, some type of bag that would hold both the water bottle and some tools together. That would, be, that would be better. There was one I saw on Amazon that was a, uh, like a triangle bag that had a water bottle thing, but my water bottle is a little bit too too big di diameter wise by just like a quarter inch too big so it won't hold it I may be forced to have to get something like that anyways and just change out to a different different uh, water bottle that's possible so where I'm going right now is I'm heading towards the uh, the area we always go to to check out how well the bikes go over a hill because some of the questions people asked were, uh, how's it do on hills? <laughs> well, <laughs> we shall see. It's, uh, it did fairly well when I went to Naperville and Bolingbrook. Those had small hills. It's a little inclines, really. But this one that we're going to go up is the one I always use to test out to see how well a bike really does. Now, a lot of times when I did that test, I just used the throttle to do it. But in this case, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pedal it to go up. So we'll see if we end up not making it <laughs> or whether we make it. Now, I'm currently at uh, pedal assist level one right now. <laughs> that to me in itself is a surprise. I never use pedal assist level one. Let's go to two. Yeah, I get a little bit more uh, a little more power with two, but I can do one. Let's go to zero. Let's see how I'm doing without any assist. Okay, I can feel it slowing down. <laughs> but hey, I'm riding it. I'm actually riding at zero. I can't believe it. Let's put back on one or two. Let's get two to get started here. We can always drop back to one. So here's what that means is that if the battery dies on me, I might actually be able to pedal this bike home. It'll be tougher. I could feel it. It was a little, little um, more resistance, obviously, but I might actually be able to do it. I've never been able to zero out any of my other e-bikes. They're too heavy. This bike is 56 pounds. Some of my other bikes are over 100 <laughs> with all the stuff I carry on it. So how's the ride? Well, the ride is actually pretty good, but you have to remember that uh, the bike does not have any kind of suspension. There's no front suspension, there's no rear suspension. So you feel every kind of bump. All right. Let's hit the thing. Let's make sure everyone sees me there. They do. Oh, we'll pedal up a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> This is the hardest part, I think, of riding this bike. Because it is a single gear, getting started is the hardest part of it all. You don't have any ability to drop to a lower gear to get running and then you know, increase your gears as you go up. I have no ability. It's a single gear, and so uh, you kind of suffer a little bit going up. Good morning. So, um, I think that's the biggest drawback. But I do kind of like the fact that it's simple. There's the simplicity of lack of gears. Not having to worry about gears and derailers and shifters and all sorts of stuff. Brakes work pretty well. These are mechanical uh, disc brakes. 180 millimeter rotors. Good morning. 
All right, we're heading towards that hill. Once we pass that stop sign, we got to get ready to do the hill. Okay, I got to say hello to this guy. I see you walking all the time. <laughs> oh, I see you riding all the time. My name's Russ. What's your name? I'm Scott. 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 <laughs> I do an e-bike channel on YouTube. That's why you see me riding all the time. Yeah, but good for you, man. I got different bikes all the time. This, this one is actually an e-bike, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> see ya. All right, I had to say hi to him. I see him all the time. And uh, I don't know if I'll put, put him on YouTube or not. <laughs> all right, so. Um, where was I? Okay, we got to go up the hill. <laughs> once we uh, once we pass the the stop sign, we're gonna we're gonna go up the hill. Yeah, you know, some people I see all the time on the path. He's one I've seen since last year. It's literally every time I'm out here, he's here. <laughs> He does his daily walk. All right, going up this little incline, I could feel two was uh, two was a little hard to go up. So I think by the time we get up the other hill, we're gonna we're gonna have to pedal up. So I'm gonna bring us all the way up to pedal assist level five, which was what I usually do for all the other bikes as well. So it's only fair to do it that way. So we'll coast a little bit, kind of gain my breath back again. All right, we're over to the, the bridge, which means now we got to pedal. All right, if you can see my uh, speedometer, you'll know how well we're doing. We're doing about 19 right now. I'm not pedaling hard. You gotta remember this has a cadence sensor in here. Oh man, we're doing it easy. Doing 13, 12, 12.4, 13. Yeah, we did 12 to 13 miles per hour. I'm gonna drop us back down. That's as good as all the other bikes. That's as good as the Magicycle Cruiser. <laughs> That's as good as the cruiser. This is a 350 watt motor, the cruiser 750. Now, granted, I had to uh, I had to pedal it. I couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't do it with the uh, uh, throttle because I have no throttle. Okay, the cruiser does a little bit better. Now I'm thinking back about it. I think the cruiser did like 14 on throttle. Okay, if you pedaled, it'd be even better. <laughs> But all the other bikes, okay, all the other bikes on throttle typically don't even do as well as this one did at 12 while pedaling. Now, the other bikes had I pedaled and throttled, of course you can do better, but then you're doing double, double assisting, right? This one, pedal only. Yeah, we went over the hill. All right, later on there's another hill. <laughs> Um, the parking lot area, no, not parking lot, but the, the area of the forest preserve where the, where the cars ride through, you know, there's a shortcut area and then there's the car area. Let's take the car area when we get there. Let's see how well this thing does. They might actually have a tougher, tougher test for it because over there, um, it's a longer, longer hill. So yeah, let's do that test today. Yeah, we, we probably won't be able to do a full range test today. Because like I said, it might actually rain. I may have to get back before it starts raining on me. If it doesn't, we'll keep going. But if not, we'll have to, we'll have to do it another day. But at least we can do these other tests for the bike. Oh, let me tell you about the price of the bike. <laughs> Magicycle dropped in another $100 on the sale. 
they had they had dropped it down to twelve ninety nine. Well, they dropped it back down now to eleven ninety nine. You put in the Russ One code, you you save another hundred dollars. Which means if you use the code, you use my affiliate link if you want to buy it. You're talking a thousand ninety nine dollars. That's not bad. <laughs> thousand ninety nine dollars for a for a, a bike that uh, essentially doesn't look like an e-bike now you're probably wondering we got to find out what the range is yeah I know if we know what the range is then we know if this bike is worth considering right because we know we have decent power even at 350 watts and all this stuff is overgrown here we have decent power 350 watts we have a 7 amp hour battery this is a 52 volt battery in here people were trying to compare it to other bikes that they said you should look at well some of those bikes are only like 30 36 volts or something well this one's 52 maybe that's why we're getting the power Now angling the bike is real easy. I can just pick this thing up and move it. I, I can literally pick this bike up with one hand if I wanted to. I've done it already. Just grab the top tube, lift it up by one hand. Can't do that with the other bikes. All right. So again, the start up it takes me a little bit longer to start up moving because I have to kind of kick it off the ground and <laughs> propel myself a little bit kind of like a skateboard you know you know what I'm saying put one foot on the skateboard kick it a little bit and get moving same thing here <laughs> hop up on the seat kick it a little bit and get it moving a little bit and then start pedaling right I apologize if you hear any clicking sounds uh, that could be the cable of my microphone hitting the top of the the helmet I've been noticing that a little bit uh, since I have to wear the the audio recorder again I have no front basket or anything um, that cable tends to uh, bounce against the helmet a little bit so if you hear any cl very subtle clicking it, it's the uh, it's the cable hitting the, the helmet and my audio uh, microphone it's connected to the visor of my helmet <laughs> all right so you know I don't know the exact uh, charging quantity on this battery, but uh, I, I believe I read or heard somewhere that the charging was something like seven or eight hundred times. I might be wrong. Don't don't hold me on this one. Okay, I have to do a little more research on it. And if that's the case, the battery lasts quite a long time. Somebody asked me what what happens if the batteries die. <laughs> well, that would be the issue, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go up this hill here. This is the one where most of the regular bikes have a hard time getting up the hill. Let's, let's, let's pump ourselves up. We'll go to pedal assist level four. I can immediately feel the thing helping me pull up. I'm doing 15.7 miles an hour, almost 16 miles an hour up the hill. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't let people fool you and say that, you know, 350 watt motor it's worthless no I don't think so it's doing pretty good all right going down the hill now I'm gonna slow myself down a bit I will say that uh, it's still taking me a little bit of time to get used to the thin tires again I really feel like I'm riding my bike when I was in high school <laughs> remember the 10 speed bikes we used to have in high school I kind of feel like I'm riding something like that because of the thin tire. I've never had a bike with this thin of a tire before in a long time. Uh, the last time was in high school. Whoops. I think there goes my water bottle. <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me pull over here. Yep. That one bounce bounced my water bottle's uh, bungee cord off. Let me show you what I did here. So I just kind of rubber band it and then I bungee cord it. <laughs> it ripped the bungee cord off. This is what's left of it. Oh well. 
well, the water bottle is not going to hold by itself on, on this with just the, well, maybe it would with just the rubber bands. Kind of bounce a little bit. Yeah, no damage to the bike. Look what it did to the cord. Oh, here's the other part of the cord. Look at this. Yeah, it ripped it right off. How do you like that? Well, at least it did that and it didn't get caught within the uh, spokes. It's probably the spokes that ripped it. <laughs> No damage to the bike that I can see. Well, we'll ride on. I'll have to find a garbage can and throw this out. The sad part is we're going up a hill. <laughs> All right, well, this will be a test. Going up a hill. Okay, here's some garbage cans. Let me go here. And this is gravel, which I kind of really hate to be on with a thin tire. Yeah, don't leave your junk. <laughs> don't don't leave your junk in the middle of the road, okay? Pick up your own garbage. All right, back up on this thing. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> well, you know what the title of this video is gonna be. <laughs> My bike rips off my uh, bungee cord. I don't know. We'll come up with a with a good title for you. <laughs> okay. Well, we do have to find a better solution for the water bottle. <laughs> I thought my water bottle had fallen off, but now it's just being held by a couple rubber bands. It's okay. Hopefully, we don't lose the water bottle as well. Well, that was the excitement for today. Yeah, what an interesting review, huh? Well, it's proved a couple things. Proves that we can go up a hill. Proves that the bike can take a ticking, a licking and keep on ticking. <laughs> Is that trademarked? Sorry. <laughs> Alright, we got another hill we gotta go up after this one. from a dead stop almost a dead stop you know I can't do a full stop rolling stop is the best I can do going up the hill <laughs> no problem 20 miles an hour 21 <laughs> 22 almost 21.9 that's pretty good what do you think <laughs> let's drop ourselves back down I think for the majority of my rides It'll be a pedal assist level one or two, which means it's gonna save my battery, right? Seven amp hour battery might be just fine. This is gonna save my battery. Give me more range. All right, we gotta go over here. Now this will be a little bit tough to cross because I have no, um, no throttle. If cars come, I would be in trouble. <laughs> this, this would be the one time you kind of wish you had some gears. And you kind of wish you had a throttle. All right, you gotta, you gotta learn to live with it. Come on, this is a, it's a different kind of bike. You can't expect every bike to give you everything. This is class one. All right. Nobody could say a word with you being on this path. First off, they don't even know it's electric. Secondly, uh, it is a class one, which would be allowed on most paths. Now let's drop down to pedal assist level one. We're going kind of fast, surprisingly fast. So I have the headlight on, which of course means uh, there's a backlight on the display. But of course, uh, it's hard for you to see that. I see a slight glimmer of a backlight on the uh, display screen. You know, a lot of people like these uh, color displays, and then you got these basic, uh, basic uh, LCD displays. The color displays, what do they call those? TFT displays or something? I don't even know what that stands for. Um, these LCD displays, not so bad, really. 
Well. On your left. Okay, she seems to have a little bit of trouble there. Maybe the bike is too big for her, I don't know. But I, I kind of like these LCD displays because in bright sunlight, they're still very easy to see. Sometimes the, the color displays are a little hard to see in bright light. So you might hear a siren in the background here. Yeah, every time at around 10 o'clock on a Tuesday, yeah, it's 10.01 right now, uh, they do the emergency uh, sirens as a test to make sure the sirens are good in case there is an emergency. So every Tuesday, 10 o'clock, I don't know how it is in your part of the country. Do you guys have that? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Let me know if this siren thing is, uh, all over the place or is it just here in Illinois I, I don't remember how it was in San Diego maybe they had it too I, I don't remember I lived in San Diego for like eight years and I, I can't even recall <laughs> yeah you can hear the you can hear the sirens pretty well I have heard that go off before um, when uh, when they had tornado warnings, they'll they'll kick into sirens to warn people that there's potential tornadoes. So the the horn uh, rotates. So obviously we hear uh, almost kind of like a Doppler effect on it. Well, at least it goes louder and softer. Okay, we're gonna go up a hill here. We're pedal assist level three right now. Yeah, I have no problem going up these hills. Yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for those who've been asking, how's the, uh, yeah, I, I see where the siren is. The, the horn is up ahead to the left. Um, those who've been asking, how's it doing hills? No problem. No problem. I'll tell you a little secret. <laughs> I think I mentioned it on the, on the other videos too. Um, when I told Magic Cycle that, wow, those things are really loud. Okay, he's going down. <laughs> They're shutting it down. <laughs> That's really loud when you're getting close to the to the broadcast tower thing. Um, I told them that I liked the bike, and they were surprised that I liked the bike. <laughs> I thought that was funny. You send me a bike and you're surprised I like it. <laughs> well, I think they all kind of felt that, you know, Russ is kind of big. He likes his big bikes. He likes his speed. They know how I ride. <laughs> and then I come back and tell them I like this little bike. Yeah, I do. I really like this little bike. <laughs> okay, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. You have an e-bike now? Go get this one too. <laughs> get a second bike. This is fun. This, this 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 feels like. Look, I'm doing 20 miles an hour. Okay, don't say anything that I'm going on the path at 20 to 21 dial, miles an hour. Okay, we know that we're testing the bike out. <laughs> There's hardly anybody out here. This is the best time for me to test it. That's why I'm doing it early in the morning. Um, get yourself a second bike. Especially now with you know the pricing the way it is come on what, what did I say it was um, $11.99 on sale now they dropped it an extra hundred dollars I mean they just came out with this thing they took the $400 discount dropped it down another hundred put in the hundred dollar code for me and that saves you another hundred <laughs> I think it works let's hope it works all right it might or might not we'll see all right uh, I'm just saying I mean even if you don't use the Russ 100 code let's say the Russ 100 code doesn't work I think there's a regular 100 code on on the website anyway do that but use the affiliate link all right give me some credit before you go to the magic cycle site go on the description of the video click that first at least give me uh, give me a little credit for it if you don't click it I don't get any credit for it <laughs> give me a little bit of give me a little bit of help all right, 
So, uh, yeah, I like the bike. It's gone over the hills with no problems. We're doing 20 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm gonna drop this thing down to level two. Three seems to be a little bit too much already. Yeah, if we stay in one and two, it's gonna save us um, battery range. I never ride it one or two, come on. And yet I'm doing it with this bike. That's, that's the amazing part about it all. That's why I like the bike. You know, when they were surprised, I like it. Well, look, it's doing things that I've never been able to do before. <laughs> I'm pedaling more now, right? I have no choice. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm getting range. I'm getting speed. I'm going over hills. I'm quiet. There's no noise on this bike. Okay, a little bit of brake squeal there. Not much. You know, brakes do squeal. I, mean, I don't think it's like all brakes are not going to have a squeal. Some of them are going to have a little squeal every now and then. But overall, the brakes were not really squealing much at all. Yeah, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on situation. <laughs> How far have we gone? 8.3 miles now since I started riding the bike today. We're still on five bars out of five bars on the battery meter. Now I know you really can't trust everything just on the battery meter. So I think usually when I try to do range tests and the like, um, when I get down to two, two bars or so, I start heading back. <laughs> I mean, if it's going to die on me, at least it'll die out on the, on the streets where I can maybe get back home, maybe. Or at least call someone and says, come get me. <laughs> if I'm in the middle of the forest preserve and it dies out on me, that's a problem because they can't get to me. I'd have to walk it to the entrance in order to uh, get picked up. That's, that's why uh, even if I did a range test here, it would not be... Um, would not be to the end of the the battery here in the forest preserve. It's just it's just not uh, not going to be happening. All right. So what have I identified as good and bad about the bike? Well. I've been telling you about the good stuff so far. Let's talk about some of the potential things that could be upgraded or improved. Every bike could be improved. I don't care how much they put engineering into it. There's always something else that you can do to make it better, right? So I already mentioned before in the first video that the charge port, the little rubber cover over the charge port, too flimsy. <laughs> it's held by a little piece of rubber like uh, the thing that you uh, flip up, the thing that keeps the rubber thing in place, you know, so you don't fall, it doesn't fall off and lose it. That's a really thin piece of rubber. You, you can rip that off real easy. That could have been improved. It could have been thicker or something. That's the one thing. Second thing, no bottle cage holder. Not the holder, but at least, you know, the holes where you can put on a bottle cage. Doesn't have that. Could have found a place to put that, guys. <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> All right. I lean forward a little too much to the point where I feel like my arms are tired out because I'm pushing down on the handlebars because I'm leaning forward, okay? I think this could be higher. What I, You know what I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do? I don't think I'm gonna get a more extender because there's several uh, extenders on here already on this this uh, handlebar stem. I think what I'll do is I'll buy a uh, a new uh, what do you call this thing handlebar stem, okay? But one that's adjustable that tilts. You know that you can tilt it one way or the other here. I think I'm gonna get one of those. I don't think Magic Cycle sells them. 
But I think uh, I'll go on Amazon. I'll see if I can find one that's inexpensive. I think they're typically 20 to 25 dollars. They're not that expensive. That would raise the height of the handlebar a little bit, so I'm not leaning down as much. And then it'll also tilt it towards me a little bit more, so my back will be more upright. Now I know that the, <laughs> the design of these uh, commuter bikes typically aren't designed to be like that, but sometimes you have to adjust it according to how you feel comfortable, whether it's the correct design for the bike or it isn't, you got to go for what you feel feels right for you. It's like, for instance, I changed the saddle. Now, I change everybody's saddle. <laughs> it's not just Magic Cycle, all right? It's everybody else, too. The saddles that are usually given on bikes are re relatively inexpensive saddles. The one that they gave on here is kind of cool looking, actually. You know, like I said, it looks like a racing saddle. It's really thin, but I'm a big guy. I have to have a bigger saddle. <laughs> so... I immediately changed that out. I put a Bikeroo saddle. By the way, these Bikeroos that I bought were uh, on sale. I think I bought them for under $18. I bought five of them, but they're not as cushy as my original Bikeroo saddles. The, the, the foam is it's kind of like hard. It's not cushy at all. All right, so I got, I got the width that I like, but I don't got the cush that I like on them but I refuse to spend more, so <laughs> Russ is right, but Russ is cheap, I told you. <laughs> so it is what it is, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna spend more and hope that the, uh, the ones that I pay more have a better uh, thing. It, it's supposed to be the same saddle, it, it is. It's the same order number, everything. You know, it's the, but uh, they're making it differently. Maybe they bought uh, cheaper material or something. So I don't know what it is, but it's not the same saddle in the sense that it's, uh, it's a little harder. So yeah, you gotta change out the saddle. Well, at least for me, I gotta change out the saddle. So, um, the fenders, okay. The fenders are uh, metal fenders. Okay, <laughs> but they're so close to the tires that they have to be aligned just right in order for um, for it not to rub against the tire, right? So you might find that you're going to sit there and play with the adjustment <laughs> to to make sure that the uh, fenders uh, at least clear and not hit the tire. I don't know why they make uh, fenders so tight like that. You know, it's just like perfectly hugging the tire almost. So uh, when when they're shipped, the bikes are shipped. The bikes bump against the, the cardboard box. I think it misaligns things when that happens. So if you don't, if you don't uh, realign the, the fenders, you could be rubbing against your tire. So that took me a while to play with. So just be aware that you may be doing that as well. If, if you buy this bike, you may have to play with the fenders. So that's a negative. People say that you never say anything negative about the bikes. I'm telling it to you now, okay? <laughs> These are the negative things. These are minor negative things, all right? These are adjustment things, no big deal. Every bike needs to be adjusted somehow. But still, I'm telling it to you. Just my uh, mirror here, I think I bumped it again. Then 10.3 miles, I'm still five bars out of five. Is there anything else negative? Headlight is there, but it's, uh, you know, it's not very powerful. Most of these headlights are not powerful. They, they don't give you anything that's really good. <laughs> Nobody does. So it's, it's a cheap little light, okay? But at least they gave you a light. I, and I always leave mine on. I never ride at night. <laughs> I leave mine on during the, uh, the daylight just for visibility. I wish these things blinked as well. That would be nicer. Grabs more uh, attention during the daytime, but they don't. So, uh, they don't have a rear tail light. They give you one, they give you a uh, a battery operated one so which means you have to put the charger on it you got to charge it up okay 
at least they gave you that, but they, they don't have wiring for a rear tail light, which means if you hit the brakes, it's not gonna light up. <laughs> now, luckily for me, I have my Xneedo helmet on. That gives me my blinking red light on, on the head, at least. People can see that. Yeah, you really could, because I, I was watching my wife when she was in front of me when we were riding together. Um, I could see her, uh, her uh, helmet lights. So yeah, good thing I have that, right? So I think that's really the only negative things I can come up with. <laughs> a lot of positives, a couple of negatives. The negatives are, are nitpicking type things. They're not really a, a real big deal. But uh, so there you have it. That's that's my evaluation of uh, of the bike at this point. I think uh, I think the only thing left to do is to get the final total count for the battery, and then we're essentially done with this review. And that doesn't mean I'm done with the bike. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep this bike. I don't think I'm selling this at all. People would ask me, uh, what do you do with all the bikes? Well, right now I've kept everything except the KBO. It got sold to a friend. But eventually the bikes are going to have to go away. I can't keep them all. <laughs> I'm running out of space and there's several more bikes coming in for review. Um, But I think, I think I will keep this bike. Even if it came down to the time, you know, do you keep or sell? I, I think I would keep this bike. I kind of like the fact that I have a bike that's lighter in weight that I can take it and go right away if I wanted to. Uh, don't have to mess with the big heavy bikes. Yeah, I got a pedal. <laughs> I'm tiring out right now. Um, that is a hassle. There's no throttle, but uh, you just got to learn to live with it. It'll probably help fix my knees better. <laughs> oh, let me answer the question. Do you ghost pedal at all on this? Yes, you do a little bit. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it, it is a single gear. <laughs> if you're going too fast, you're going to feel it like you're ghost pedaling. And, and it does have a cadence sensor, so it'll keep you moving, even though you're not pedaling hard. So yeah, those, those are those are some negative things, right? You know, if you have ghost pedaling going on, if you, if you want to be able to pump on on a little bit harder, where you can feel your your rotations at high speeds, yeah, you're you're gonna get a little bit of ghost pedaling. We find that on almost every single bike now, though. So it's not it's not unique. But even so, with the ghost pedaling, it does keep my legs moving and. That's that's the thing that's going to really help my knees in the long run. All right, I think we're done. <laughs> let me let you guys go for today. I'm going to keep going if I can. Uh, I may have to do this this uh, this battery endurance test in parts this time. Uh, in the past, I used to do it, and you know, I would ride until the battery exhausted all the way. But considering the fact that I have to pedal this the entire time I, I, I seriously doubt I'm gonna last until this battery dies out <laughs> I may have to take it over a couple of days just don't ride it you know just don't charge it just let it sit for a while and then uh, come back the next day and ride some more and then add up the total mileage I think I think that's really the only way I can do it I wish I could do one continuous but here we are at 11.7 miles we're still five bars out of five <laughs> on the battery it's gonna be a long way. I don't think I can last it. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and hit um, the link to the first video that we did about this bike. That'll tell you the features of the bike. We're, we're splitting up these reviews into multiple, multiple day reviews now rather than one continuous one because uh, it's just too many bikes coming in all at the exact same time. <laughs> so I figured uh, the first one lets you see it. Second one lets you see what I'm doing as far as uh, riding it through it. And then uh, we usually had done a third one, which would be uh, battery range test. But um, 
I'll just tell you what the final battery range is <laughs> once we get to that point, okay? I'll talk to you guys next time.